Good morning, true crime friends. How you doing today is Wednesday, March the 20th. Happy hop day. Look, we got some good stories today. Hang on. Remember last week when James Crumbly was on trial? James Crumbly is the father of the Oxford school shooter over there in Michigan. And so I didn't really watch the trial. I watched Jennifer Crumbly's trial and she got convicted of like, you know, aiding and abetting the unfortunate unaliving of some poor children. Um, when her son took a firearm to school. Okay, that was a terrible story. And having watched Jennifer's trial, I was like, I know how James' trial gonna go. It's gonna be the same evidence. Um, the lawyering might be a little bit better, but ultimately he's gonna get convicted. And that's what happened. But then there was a twist in the case. James Crumbly, right before verdict. Ooh. <coughs> oh my goodness. Little, oh, uh, uh, my throat's a little dry this morning. Hang on. Not in the presence of the jury. The prosecutor stood up and was like, your honor, we would like to take all his phones away because he'd been talking some mess and making threats. Um, so we would like his phone removed. And James was very animated. He, like, ah! he lost his ever loving mind. And I was like, okay, can we find out what the threats were? Who were the threats against? Who was he talking to? What exactly did he say? You know, I wanted to know every single thing because I'm nosy like that. And let's be real. You want to know too. I know you wanted to know because I wanted to know. And me and you, we sit here and have these private conversations in the morning and we like, mm, what he done did. So look, I found out what he done did. So this is what had happened. James Crumbly was on the phone with his sister, right? And he was talking mess about the prosecutor. Now look, if you're being prosecuted, it is only natural to talk mess about the prosecutor. Yeah, you can talk about how her hair is bad, how her booty is too big, whatever. Say whatever you're going to say. But you know what? You can, are you talking all this mess from jail while she's free? And also, she has the power to keep you in jail, so you might want to govern yourself accordingly. But James, James, in the words of my beloved grandmother, he don't believe fat meat is greasy. Like, look. This boy, but it says on the call, these calls are being recorded and you just run in your mouth, run in your mouth. Um, You might be in jail on the strength of you real, real stupid. So he said about the prosecutor, um, I'm going to make it my life's work to destroy her life. Sir, I'm going to need you to have all the seats in the world. And he was like, "Um, wait, what is the quote? She's She'll be in hell soon. So what does that mean? What does that mean? Are you going to um, unfortunately unalive her? Is it going to be an accident on your watch that you're in charge of? Or are you just saying you're going to make her so miserable that she's going to feel real bad? Either way, sir, I, listen, hot tip. I have, no, I have never been in jail. Just please know that I am not a jail girl. That's not, that's not where my strengths lie. But you know what I do know? Number one, you should not threaten people. Number two, you probably should not threaten a prosecutor. Number three, while you locked up, you can talk a whole lot of mess about free people. But what you're probably not going to want to do is talk a whole lot of mess about the lady who's in charge of keeping you in jail. Those are private thoughts, right? You say that to your cellmate. You sell that to your friend. You write that on a piece of paper, child. You tell that to Jesus. But what you should not do is say it on a line where they say this line is being recorded. On the other hand, there's a little tidbit of information about these threats that I had not realized. Number one, this trial took place in 2024. March of 2024 is when this trial took place. You know when these threats were made? I was like, oh, did he make them threats last week? Mm-mm. He made those threats in 2022. So wait, 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 wait. There were some in 2023 also, but the threats were from 2022 and 2023, two whole years before it was brought before the judge. So this is what I need to understand. Prosecutor, Miss Prosecutor, now listen. I'm glad that the prosecutor did her job. I'm glad that the prosecutor put these people away. Why you wait two years, girl? What what happened in that two years that she was like, hmm. Now, on court TV and in other spaces, it has been speculated that um this was all just gamesmanship. Now, I could understand why that idiot James Crumbly was like, Woo, all up in arms and flailing and no, no, no. Like, wait, you want to take away all of my phone access now? Why suddenly, two years later, was it important for you to um bring these threats to the court's attention. Hmm. Okay. 
uh, was it for the cameras? Was it for the judge? When, like, look, this prosecutor is like, oh, I know this Mama Luke is going down. Let me just put this on the record so that the judge can consider this when she's thinking about the prosecution. So I'm like, I mean, thinking about the sentence. And then he gets, after he obviously gets convicted. James Boo Boo, you're not that smart. I mean, I don't know that anybody thought he was brilliant to start with. But sir, um, threatening to destroy the life of the prosecutor. Number one, that's only natural when you're up in jail and you're locked up. On a recorded line, while you're already locked up, sir, mm -mm, I'm just, you're going to jail, sir. And, um... I feel real bad for you. I don't feel that bad for you. But I'm just like, okay. But then also it was speculated. Maybe the prosecutor was just like, oh, he's impotent on every level. And we're just going to see what else he says. Let that fool keep talking. Let him think these calls don't make a difference. Let's just let all the threats stack up. And then we have a big pile of them. We're like, judge, here you go. Let me just serve these up to you on a platter. Here's some things that this idiot has said. I guarantee you this is going to come up in his sentencing. Oh, James saw he was going to go free. He was like, oh, I'm, I'm going to go to my house. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back to be a DoorDash delivery, whatever. And um, that's going to be that. Mm -mm. Sir, this is not going to look good for you. So um, good luck, James Crumbly. You're kind of an idiot. But we knew that from the way you led your life. Also, that house was a mess. I mean, listen, it's not that I'm a neat freak. I, I can tidy up. But when the, the cops came in and showed all that video of his house, I was like, oh, how, how'd that child even find a gun and all that mess? I don't, I am not clear at all. Look, Corey Richards' mama. We talked about Corey Richards' mama yesterday. What is her name? Wait, I think I wrote her name down. Someplace. Lisa Darden. Corey Richards is this lady who fed her husband a poisonous Moscow mule down there in uh, Utah. Um, them Utahians. What do you call people from Utah? Utahians? Mormons? I don't know what you call people from Utah. But um, y'all be getting up to some things. Corey Richards' mama. Well, first of all, in case you didn't know, in case you didn't see my video from yesterday. Oh, we talked a lot about Miss Corey Richards yesterday. Corey Richards fed her husband a poisonous Moscow mule. It had five times the lethal dose of fentanyl, and he died. And then she was like, oh, oh me, oh my, I can't believe it. Oh, he's dead. Where's my money? And it turns out he knew she was trying to kill him. And so I don't know why he didn't just leave or tell the police or something, but okay, whatever. Um... Corey Richens was like, oh, he took me off the life insurance. Pro tip, if you take somebody off the life insurance, let them know. Because in my mind, had she known she was not on the life insurance, that might have given him a longer time to live. I'm just saying. Everybody who's on my life insurance, everybody in this family knows who the beneficiaries are. And they govern themselves accordingly. Now, listen, I don't think that go that means they're going to try to kill me. But I, I know that like my husband's going to be like, oh. It all goes in trust for the house and the kid. Okay, never mind. So I feel very safe. Now, if you see somebody sneaking up behind me in this space right here, please let a sister know. Because, you know, I don't know. Maybe they just mad and they sick of my mouth. Anyway, which is an excellent possibility. Corey Richards' mama um, was partnered with a lady who, I guess they were lovers or friends or whatever. Um, Corey Richards' mom, Lisa Darton, was part partnered with a lady who died and Lisa Darden got all the life insurance. Okay, cool. But the lady who died, died of a fentanyl overdose, but she was a known drug user and um, she had a prescription for fentanyl. So they were like, oh, maybe she just took too much. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So when the lady died, Lisa Darden, Corey's mom could be like, oh, I'm so sad. Where's my money? Bish better have my money. I didn't say that other word. I said a bisque of thick, creamy soup better have my money. Anyway, and so um, when Corey was having trouble with her husband, Corey's mama was like, girl, listen, you know we know how to deal with this. Now, look, it's a lot of problems my kids could call me with. If your gravy is not thickening, oh, well, yes, you call your mama. Your partner, your lover, is how y'all having trouble, communication issue, you call your mama. Your car breaks down, you're going to need to call daddy for that because I don't know nothing about that life. I'm just saying, you know who in your family you can call for which problems. Um, A husband that's not acting right or a partner that's not acting right, you can call me. You know what's not going to be on my list of suggestions? Murder. I'm going to be like, you could come live in your old bedroom. Maybe we can have a talk. Maybe y'all can go to therapy. Maybe y'all can take some time apart. Stuff like that. Corey Richards, mama. 
Corey Richards' mama was like, baby, you got some fentanyl? What you need to do is go on down, get you some fentanyl, and um, you need to put it in his drink. Mom, um, I, that's not a good idea. Because, you know, Corey Richards' mama was like, it worked for me. Why wouldn't it work for you? Plus, you got to get your name on a life insurance part, uh, life insurance policy. Okay, cool, cool, cool. This is good motherly advice. Clearly, murdering folks runs in their family. Okay, duly noted. Don't marry a partner with none of them richens. Uh, Corey got a, a brother. Uh, their brother's wife. You okay, girl? Are you mm, or husband? Whatever. Their brother's partner. You in trouble, boo? Don't make nobody in that family mad. Back away slowly and tell them who's the beneficiary of the life insurance policy don't make it none of them because you could have a bad problem now the prosecutors feel like that Corey Richards mama Lisa Darden helped her plot the murder oh co-conspirators and now it's coming out that from the time Lisa Darden's partner died the police suspected that Lisa Darden killed the lady what They've been suspecting her for a long, long time. So when Corey's husband died in exactly the same way, the police was like, oh, that's that murderous heifer to live over there on 2nd Street or wherever she happened to live. Um, it has long been suspected that the mother helped her plan, helped her plot, probably told her all the best spots to buy fentanyl. I don't know how fentanyl sales and marketing works, but um, they think her mama helped her out. And I was like, okay, but if you can't prove it, you can't prove it, fine. Only they've been investigating. The other thing this investigation does, especially the fact that it's come to light now, is that Corey Richard's mama. Oh, Miss Lisa Dart. Oh, she's been up on the news. My daughter would never. I'm weeping openly right now. Can you believe? Oh my goodness. Everybody knows that Corey is a loving mother and a perfect wife. Yes, we have a little homicide on the maternal side of the family, but um, please ignore that. I We just keep coming into money. I don't know how it works. Anyway, um, now that we know that Lisa Darden is trash, she can't testify on Corey's behalf. Y'all... What is the jury going to think when they like, wait, how come her mama not testifying? Her and her mama was very close. All of these phone calls to her mama, but her mama now can't get up here and testify. And her mother can't testify because if her mother takes the stand, they can ask the mama all the questions about her past and her poisonization of her partner and how much money she got in life insurance and all of it. And I was like, oh, well played prosecution. In my opinion, Corey Richards is guilty. Very, very guilty. But as you know, I'm not the judge. I'm not on the jury. I'm just a big mouth lady from New Jersey who has thoughts and feelings, who is not afraid to express them at all. Last but certainly not least, I thought to myself, okay, I only have two stories this morning. This little James Crumley and this Corey Richards situation. And then this little jewel just dropped into my inbox this morning. One of my cousins sent me this story like, hey girl, have you seen this? And I was like, okay, what's this? This 33-year-old lady, I didn't even write down her name because I was so fascinated by the rest of the story. 33-year-old lady from Louisiana is sitting down there in Louisiana minding her business. She's a 911 operator. So I'm like, okay, she's a dispatcher. So she knows like where to send the police and how laws work and all that. Okay, cool, 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 cool. She's doing a little trading over there at Morgan Stanley or one of the major brokerage houses. And she was like, dear Morgan Stanley, let me go on here. Let me transfer. You know how you transfer a little bit of money? Let me transfer $82 from this account into that account. And Morgan Stanley made a, a teensy little mistake, a little, little bitty one instead of transferring her $82 and I'm thinking whether they transfer $820 because sometimes that happens an extra zero or whatever they transferred $1.2 million okay first of all how good was her day? She was just like, wait, 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 wait. Is this an optical illusion? I'm just checking my cow balance. And now I have $1.2,082,000 in my account. And so do you think she called and was like, hi, Morgan Stanley, listen, hey, I'm having a good day. Thanks, I'm glad you're having a good day too. Listen, there's been a little accounting error. No, that is not what she did at all. She was like, hmm, okay, hmm. Let me make wise financial decisions here. I had a brokerage account so that I could maximize my return and do other financial type things. So I'm going to do the smart move and immediately transfer it out of this account to another account. And then I'm going to go commence to spending that money. And I was like, Heffa, Heffa, you work for like law enforcement. Theoretically, you understand how laws work. 
Um, yes, it's a clerical error. If you read the fine print on any of their contracts or whatever, you know it says in there, Heifer, if we accidentally transfer some money, you got to give it back. But um, she was not about that give it back life. So I was like, well, you know she bought herself a couple of things. Did she buy herself a Birkin bag? Did she go to like a nice red lobster dinner? Mm -mm. You want to know what she did? She quit her job. That makes sense. Although it's ill-advised because if it was a mistake, at some point they're going to catch that mistake and you're going to have to get that money back. She was not thinking that far ahead. Um, she bought herself a car. Okay, that makes sense. Even if you buy yourself a really nice car, say you buy yourself a $50,000 car, that still leaves enough money for you to give it back when they come asking for their money because you know they're going to come ask for their money, right? You know they're going to come and ask. And you're like, okay, I, could buy, I bought the car in cash, but I could go back and finance it. Okay, cool, 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 cool. This heifer went and bought herself a house. Really now? First of all, I need to see the house. I, I just, not because it is germane to the story at all. Mostly, I'm just nosy. Also, I love looking at houses. Child, you know, I was a real estate agent, right? I was a very successful real estate agent. I was talking people into houses left, right, and center. Anyway, so, um, oh, hang on. You know, I don't talk my throat dry. She's loquacious. Anyway. She spent the money on a house and a car. And when they were like, excuse me, ma'am, we would like our money back. And she was like, what money? Whose money? I don't know what you're talking about. Um, me and my butler, we about to go on vacation again. So I don't, what? 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 And they're like, ma'am, can we, excuse me, excuse me, ma'am, that, that extra, we're going we to need our money back. And she was like, clearly wrong number. Uh, no habla inglés, click. Um, and she refused to give them their money back. Okay. Um, that sounds ill-advised to me, but do you do whatever you're going to do? Okay. Not my business. Here's where it goes slightly off the rails. Um, they ultimately were like, ma'am, this is an issue. This is a problem. You know, they were sending letters to the house, but they was probably sending them to her old address. They ain't know half of had moved into a very nice house that she likely bought in cash. Um, she got arrested. So I enjoy money. I certainly enjoy extra money, found money, a spare 1.2, yes, please, sign me right up. You know what I'm not going to enjoy? Jail. Even if it's federal prison. Even if it's one of them luxury federal prisons. No, thank you. No, thank you. Because you know what luxury prison is? Still prison. Uh, mm -mm. Nope, 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 nope. I can't do it. I can't do it. I've, I've seen, have you seen the pictures of the luxury prison? They still have hard plastic chairs. You have to wear white every day. White is not slim. Do you know how wide my butt would look in white pants every day? What? You know they don't have the good foundation garments that lift and separate? So I'm just there with some saggy boobs and white pants? No, I'm not. Uh, mm -mm. No, no. Even if nobody's going to see me but the other prisoners who are also in terrible outfits, no, thank you. I'm going to have to save up all my beats from dinner to try and dye that outfit. That is a lot of work. Anyway, um, Heffa's locked up right now. And I'm like, wait, can she, can she use some of the money to pay her bail? I don't. Are the feds going to seize that? Is that ill-gotten gains? Well, I mean, obviously it's ill-gotten gains. But she's like, y'all made an oopsie deposit. What you want from me? And I'm like, I completely understand the logic. But girl, you could be right or you could go to prison. What you go to? Take your money back. I'm going to move right on back into the trailer park and drive myself a Honda, a Honda Accord or whatever it is. Girl, how come she leave the country? Even the Adelsons... Stupid as they were, had the common sense to flee to Vietnam, or at least try to flee to Vietnam. If this was me, they would be like, where did Kathy go? Was she, I'm looking on her social media, look like she in France. Why is she in the Swiss Alps? Oh, Croatia looks beautiful this time of year. This half is just still sitting down there in Louisiana. She's not a good criminal. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Mexico. Costa Rica. You can get lost in some of these small little countries. It would take them a long time to find you. Mm. She's just going to buy a house there in Louisiana. I would, that would be like, Kathy is in her Swiss chalet with her three butlers and the pool boy. I don't know what you want from her. She not here. No esta aquí. I was like, mm-mm. Nope, 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 nope. So this woman made um, a bad decision in keeping the money, a worse decision in not fleeing the country. So I don't, I don't know what to tell you, girl. Enjoy federal prison because it's not going to go good for you. All
although if this is her it's a it's a white collar crime you don't get a whole lot of time for white collar crime you can do a whole lot of hinky stuff with money and they're like don't do it again give us back our hundred million dollars thank you have a nice day so um hopefully she doesn't get a lot of time and hopefully while she's locked up because she's definitely locked up she can learn some things if you find money like this number one make every attempt to give it back Number two, scroll a little way for yourself. Buy yourself a car, but don't go crazy. Don't buy a house. Not in this country. Buy a house in another country. Flee. Now, am I supporting uh, people in crimes? No. Official, the official line of gossip, rumor, and innuendo, LLC, is don't commit crimes. The private opinion of Kathy, the small town gossip, is um, child, flee the country. And don't say you heard it from me. Is this public? I don't think that I don't think the internet goes every place. So um, I think I'm fine. I think I'm fine. Okay, look, you know I got a meatloaf in the oven. Yes, it is five o'clock in the morning, and yes, I am making a meatloaf and some roasted cabbage and some chicken thighs because my people got to eat. Also, I enjoy cooking in the morning. Listen, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, have a great day, and um, don't commit no crimes. Bye.